Shalom, Shalom, Israel. This is Brother Yawana, uh, back with another video. And um, here, man, we got Amber Geiger. Did a video on her um, um, a while back on his brother Botham Machine. He got uh, murdered in his home, man, innocently, man, doing nothing. All right. So today she's been so called indicted for murder, man. Um, they started off with manslaughter. All right. I guess they um, they couldn't push that out, and now they changed it to murder, man. All right. The grand jury went before the grand jury and they made it a murder charge. Now, just because this happens uh, doesn't mean that she's going to actually get convicted of murder. You know, they have um, Esau and these other nations. They have ways to um, especially America have has ways where they can, uh, you know, penal codes and things that are going to make it hard for them to convict her for murder. man. All right. But let this have been a brother that walked into a, a, a so-called black, Hispanic, or Native American that walked into a white man's house or a white woman's house and shot him and killed him dead. All right. Let that have happened and see if this would have, see if it goes like it's going to go with this officer, man. All right. So we're going to read, we're going to um, play this video. That is highly anticipated by the international community from St. Lucia to all the islands in the West Indies to the, uh, England or London, where, where Botham's company was based out of, we, we receive inquiries daily about when this indictment was going to take place. And so uh, not only is this family anticipating, but the world is watching. And this is a very important decision for Dallas County. And, and what we know is that Botham was lawfully in his apartment on, the, on that night that he was killed. Uh, mm -hmm. This officer was able to find her keys. She was able to locate her car. She was able to locate the direction back to her apartment complex, but somehow she couldn't find her apartment. Uh, and, and these are answers, I think, that the grand jury is going to want to know. They're going to want to hear. Whether or not this officer is going to testify before the grand jury is probably doubtful. But I think uh, the investigation will show that at the moment that Bolton uh, was killed, he was in committing any penal offenses. And, and because of that, it has always been our belief that murder is the proper charge. All right, so this was before, um, this was before the uh the murder. All right, so this is her getting indicted. This is before the indictment of the uh, attorneys, uh, let people know what they expected. Now hey, this is the indictment. I just created a Wix website for my business. So Let me show you how I did it. Let's go to Wix. A fire Dallas police officer Amber Geiger was booked and released for a murder charge hours after a grand jury indictment. We have her mugshot. It's from the po Mesquite Police Department. Look at that devil, man. In this afternoon. Her bond was set at $200,000. Now, typically, a defendant... Now look at this woman's face, man. This is the this is who uh, bought the machine scene uh, before he got killed, man. This evil Edomite, man. All right? This evil woman, man. All right? Thank you, Roger. Percent. In this case, $20,000 to be released. The grand jury indictment for Botham Jean's shooting death followed three days of deliberations. Fox Force Alex Boyer begins our coverage tonight. And Alex, I know you have reaction from his family and also from the district attorney. What can you tell us? That's right, Heather. And, you know, nine out of 12 members of the grand jury had to come to this decision to indict Amber Geiger on murder. Uh, speaking with uh, District Attorney Faith Johnson after this decision was handed down, uh, Johnson says she believed from the onset of this case that this was a murder case. Dallas County District Attorney Faith Johnson speaking to the media after a grand jury indicted former Dallas police officer Amber Geiger with the murder of 26-year-old Botham Jean. I want to thank the grand jury for the diligence that they have given to this case, the concentration, the work. The decision of victory for the prosecution after the Texas Rangers, who were the lead on this investigation, initially charged Geiger with manslaughter for killing John inside his own apartment. Geiger told investigators she thought she was entering her own unit when she encountered John and thought he was an intruder. D.A. Johnson said she could not give details of the closed-door proceedings, but said witness testimony and physical evidence convinced the grand jury this was a murder case. Our uh, unit did a tremendous job of investigating the case, talking to over 300 witnesses, conducting different lab testing. John's parents are pleased with the grand jury's decision, but say they know they face a long road ahead. It is such a hard thing to go through. We miss our boy dearly. 
He didn't deserve that. I look forward to the next step, which is a conviction of murder of Amber Geiger, and more so of a penalty, the proper penalty. So you see how she's trusting in, a, in this American system? She think it's going to be a conviction, all right? W when is our people going to wake up, all right? This place, America, you're never going to get justice, man, all right? You're never going to get justice, all right? Right when you, just them indicting them don't mean anything, man. All right, it doesn't mean not one thing. All right, they're gonna. I, I don't know why our people trust in oppression. I got scriptures on this. We're gonna bring it out. At, well, we'll go ahead and get it. All right, we'll go ahead and get that scripture real quick. All right. All right, this is Psalms chapter 62, verse 10. Trust not in oppression, become not vain in robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. So don't trust in oppression, man. The, our people, they trust in the um, uh, American system, man. They trust in the system. They trust in the justice system. They trust in this corrupt system, man. All right? They trust in this uh, this land, man. All right? They think they're going to be justice after they've seen so many times of us not getting justice, man. All right? Multiple times of us, the, the case being cold cut, and then they're, they always get off on it, man. They're going to always get off, man. All right, and then I'm, after this video, I'm going to show you what the attorneys say on Amber Geiger's side. I'm right, going to go back to the video. That will cause her to reflect on what she has done and the pain that she has caused. And D.A. Johnson believes it will be at least a year before this murder case is ready to go to trial. Uh, Judge Tammy Kemp is scheduled uh, to preside over this case. That is, of course, unless a motion is made to move this uh, case to another venue. Uh, at this time, we have yet to hear from Amber Geiger's attorney. At least a year. Thank you. All right, Alex Boyer live. Thank you. Now, we can tell you the Geiger's attorney believes she should not be charged. He says he believes the grand jury was swayed by more than facts and thinks political pressure played a role in this murder indictment. Not surprised that a grand jury came out with an indictment. Um, there's an outpouring of vindictive emotion that's been building up. There was a lot of political pressure that seemed to play a role in how the DA handled this. And there was what I believe, I don't know what happened in the grand jury, but I believe emotion was injected into it that might have led the grand jury astray from just focusing on the law and the evidence. And so it's an indictment. It doesn't mean anything. This hasn't been tried in a fair form yet. Esau's telling you straight up, this is an indictment. This is Amber Geiger's attorneys, man. They're going to get off with this case, man. They're going to win this case, man. All right? The penal codes, and after this video, I'm going to show you another video where they're going to get deeper into it. All right? They're going to win this case, but the indictment of this means anything. All right? All they're doing is indicting them to show, oh, we, we, we actually care about you so-called Hispanics, Blacks, and Native Americans. When they actually don't, man. She's going to get off with this case. Look at these two Edomites, man. These devils out here, man. Look at them. They already know they're going to win the case, man. All right? They already know. They're like, oh, it's a motion. We know uh, they're going to they're gonna indict them because they're under political pressure. Okay, all these things, nonsense. But at the end of the day, they're not going to win the trial, man. All right? They're not going to win the trial because they're going to make the case like they do for every single one of these other uh, white officers. All right? But not even officers, white men, period, man. All right? Or white women. They're gonna, we got a white woman that made a mistake. That's what they're pushing here, man. We're going to keep reading. I mean, watch. And so when we get to a, in a fair forum in front of 12 dispassionate citizens, then I believe the law and the evidence will show that Amber Geiger is, is innocent. Innocent. Now we asked how they said she does not, she did not do anything, not manslaughter, not anything. They think she's completely innocent that her killing this, this Israelite was justified by the law, all right? And what you're going to understand is that this land frames mischief by law, man, which is in the Bible. They frame the things that they want to do by these 
BS laws, man, which aren't just. We're going to keep reading. Took the news of the indictment. Attorney Robert Rogers would not comment on that. We can tell you Dallas Police Chief Renee Hall says her department feels the, quote, anguish about this difficult and tragic event. The chief outlined some of her policy changes. She supports restructuring the Citizen Review Board, expanding bias training for officers, and taking input from employees and the community. Chief Hall was previously criticized for waiting more than two weeks to fire Amber Geiger. Waited two weeks to fire him. All right, so we're going to get to this video. This video I wanted to bring out. Um, we're going to get out of this, pause this, or whatever. Because I know it's going to go into something else. Okay, so now we're going to go to the next video. All right, these are the, um, these are the uh, attorneys for Amber Geiger. And look at these two devils. They're going to show you how easy of a case this is going to be when it goes to, goes to trial. And how it's going to be another innocent uh, Israelite, Hispanic, Black, or Native American that's going to get shot down, shot down and killed and has no justice in his land. All right? Because this place, you're never going to get justice, man. All right? They frame mischief by these laws. And they get, they get through everything with these laws that they made up. All right? They don't go by the laws in the Bible. All right, so we're going to keep reading. I mean, watch. I don't know why I keep saying that. So lucky. can't say I'm surprised because the way things seem to unfold, of course, I'm not privy to what happened behind closed doors. But the way things seem to unfold is that it wasn't just based on the law and the evidence. There was some... Emotion and See, they want it based on their laws. That's what they want. They want it based on their laws. All right. Because these laws are what these group, these groove holes that they can get through and uh make people innocent or guilty, man. All right. They don't care about what actually happened. You walking in someone's house and killing them dead for no reason at all. All right. They don't care about that. Political pressure that seemed to be injected into the process um, by the DA herself and by uh, some witnesses that they called. Plus, all the outpouring of almost vindictive emotion surrounding this. Uh, it's not surprising that an indictment was was handed down. Is this a fair indictment? Is murder a fair charge? No, it's not. You see what he just as he said, is that is this a fair indictment? Is this a fair trial? I mean a fair uh um case that they came to? He said no. She should have never been charged with murder. Now look at what this devil says. It's not murder. It's it's a tragic mistake. And her actions not only stem from just a horrible sequence of events, but they're justified by Law, Chapter 9 of the Penal Code. And what I tell you, they have penal codes and laws that are going to get this woman off, man. All right? They're going to get her off of this, man. She's going to walk free. She's not going to be charged with manslaughter. She's not going to be charged with murder. She's going to walk free. All right? And they know it. They don't even think that she should have been charged with anything. You're going to see what he says. Physical evidence. Did, did she go in this apartment meaning to kill both and John? No, I think anyone that has investigated this case, looks at this case, knows that Amber Geiger thought she was in her own apartment. It's a horrible tragedy that occurred. It was a horrible confluence of events that happened. No one thinks that. Literally no one. But you see how they're so manipulative? You see how they're like, everyone that investigates this case thinks that she made a mistake. Honestly, they think that people are so uh, simple to believe in what the officials say, to believe in what these lawyers say, all right? They think people are so simple to not do their own groundwork to see that, how did she mistake the floor? But she got there on her cart, like the video we just uh, watched by the other attorneys. How was she making these all these mistakes, but she remembered everything else, but went into the wrong uh, household with a different rug and a different look? And different furniture in it and kill this man. That makes no sense. Uh, uh, two very good people uh, forever changed because of it. Um, 
You see how they called her a very good person? Two very good people. Let a black man, all right, Hispanic or Native American man, walk into a, 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 um, a white man's house or a white woman's house and kill them dead. And see if they'd be saying they're two very good people. Negative, man. This is white suprem supremacy at its highest level, man. All right? And the differences between how they treat different ra races, all right, is obvious. How they treat Israelites and how they treat their people is in entirely different. What would have been the appropriate charge? A no-bill. Did you just hear him? He said, she asked, what would have been an appropriate charge? And he said, a no-bill. Now, what does a no-bill mean? It means that she shouldn't have been charged with anything, that she should have walked free and... <clears throat> And that this was an honest mistake. Alright? So that's what this what a no bill means. Alright? There shouldn't have been any charge that went forth and she should have walked free that day. And why would you say that? Because her actions are justified under the law. So you don't you don't prosecute. See, you see how they keep using this law, man? They use these laws, man. They don't, they don't use the most highest law, all right? They use their law, all right? And it's, hold on, we got to get a scripture on that. Oh, that's not what I want. All right. So, this is Psalms chapter 94, verse 20. Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee, which frameth mischief by a law? So, these people are the throne of iniquity. The throne of sinners, the kingdom of sinners, and they they frame mischief by laws that they made up. All right, they frame these evil things of going in and killing an Israelite, murdering a man for doing absolutely nothing by a law that they can get through the loophole with and make it as she didn't do anything. All right, they frame mischief by law. That's why they always go back to their law. They don't go back to what actually happened and what's wrong. All right. They don't go back to that. And they don't go, they don't care about the law of the Lord. All right? Which we know what the Lord says should happen. All right? People that, one, make a mistake, that don't have a criminal intent to commit a crime. And two, that their actions are justified completely by the laws that are in place. So, the laws. It's a. Injustice to just indict people uh, when they act according to the law. Is it fair to frame this in the context of the, all the police shootings that have occurred involving unarmed black men? This case is nothing like uh, uh, other cases we've seen across the country. Uh, this is not a confrontation of an officer on duty. Uh, this is a citizen uh, who happens to be a police officer who. Uh, uh, Made a mistake. A mistake made a mistake. That That's what they keep pushing. She made a mistake. When we all know that's a facade and there's nonsense. After this long time period, there's still that's why they waited so long to just for everyone to forget about this case, man. And that's what's happened. Everyone's forgot about it. Everyone's worried about 6ix9ine. Everyone's worried about uh all these other things that's going on in the world. Trump, all right, to make you forget about this, man. Alright? So they can dumb you back down and put you back to sleep. People would make in the same circumstances. Uh, and and that's, there was no criminal intent to intentionally murder anyone. Um, the DA's office had uh, his mother and his sister testify to the grand jury. How unusual is that? I don't see that happening on any other case down there. I don't see that happening on the armed aggravated robbery cases or the other murder cases or the other aggravated assault cases. So it's it's highly unusual. And what do you think the intent of that was? To inject emotion into it. And is that fair? And that's how they don't deal with is emotion. They want you to stop thinking and let's go by this law. Let's go by these laws that we made up to, for loopholes so we can get through things. Let's go by these. Let's not deal with emotion. All right, let's not deal with the spirit that the Lord tells you that vengeance should happen to these people. All right? Right. Thoughts on that? It is what it is. I mean, that's, they control the grand jury, so I can't tell them how to do it. I think that's fair. If, if they, why don't they do it on every other case? So. 
And how's Amber Geiger? She's holding up the best, the best that she can. Um, she's, uh, you know, struggles because of the terrible tragedy that occurred. She struggles. That's what they think, man. This man is dead in the ground, and they thinking she's struggling. It's, re it's ridiculous, man. But she also knows deep in her heart that this was a mistake and that uh, that we're going to defend her and we're going to do everything we can to get her a fair trial in a fair form in front of 12 fair jurors and that in a fair trial that she will be acquitted. They know. They know she's going to be acquitted. They know it. Change of opinion. We are going to take it one step at a time, and that's that is a possibility. What should have been so the grand jury? See, they want to change the venue. They want to change the area of Dallas where there's so much commotion about this. They want to get away from this area and bring it to a new area where people are going to go strictly by the laws and not by emotion. All right. So that's what it means when they're trying to say to change the venue, and they know they're going to want to do that. For murder today, what should have been the The grand jury should have no bill or, or taken no action at all. Once again, I told you, that's what no bill means, to take no action. They He's saying that they should have took no action against her, and she should have walked free for killing this man dead. All right? Against her. So, because the facts and the evidence, a dispassionate look at the facts and the evidence, show that her actions were a mistake that led to a, a shooting that is justified under Chapter 9 of the Penal Code. See, they even got the Chapter 9 in the Penal Code, man. I told you they have the exact page of the law that they're going to go to to cut this man, cut this up, man. Where all these emotions ain't going to play part. The Lord's law isn't going to play part in it. Their law is going to proceed, man. They frame mischief. They do whatever they want to do by these laws. That's why they have attorneys. That's why they have these attorneys that get paid millions of dollars to find these gaps in the law where no one can argue with them, man. All right? Any normal person could have died in this? No. Yeah. Should the penalty I think that played a very integral part of this process. As Botham Jean was an incredible young man who was tragically taken from us too soon. Our city will never forget him. Today's decision is another step in the long path towards justice for Botham. We appreciate the work of the Texas Rangers and the Dallas County District Attorney's Office. Please continue to pray for the Jean family. I think that is exhibit whatever on politicians seizing on this for their own gain. <laughs> See how he, he's he's laughing at that, man. He doesn't care about the death of the, another black man. He's like, man, I'm going to go back to my house with my millions of dollars. All right, we're going to get this easy case. All right, and we're going to sit back and chill, man. That's what he's thinking, man. And uh, injecting political pressure into the process when the mayor is commenting on what a Dallas County grand jury does. All right, so that's the end of that. All right, so we're going to get a couple of scriptures. All right. So we're going to get this. This is Psalms chapter 73, verse 8. They are corrupt. So this whole land of America is corrupt, man. From the, from the beginning, the top down, man. And speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. So they don't care. They speak wickedly concerning oppression. They don't care that he died. They don't care that he, uh, that all his ancestors were slaves. They don't care about any of these things, man. They speak wickedly concerning oppression because they're corrupt people, man. All right? They're very corrupt. And they don't go by the laws of the Lord. They go by their laws. All right? That they made up. All right? So we're going to get that scripture. It's Habakkuk 1 and 4. Therefore, the law is slack. All right? So the law is slack. The law of the Lord is slack. No one keeps the law of the Lord because if you were going by the law of the Lord, the uh, numbers 35 and 33 would come to pass. All right? Where if you put someone to death, you got to be put to death. All right? And judgment doeth never go forth. The, our people are never going to get judgment, man. She's, that's why it never happens with any. It didn't happen with Trayvon Margaret. It didn't happen with anyone else that goes through this and gets killed 
uh, unlawfully, man. All right, for no reason at all. And they always get away with it. So the Lord said, therefore, the law is slack and judgment do have never go forth. True judgment never goes forth. For the wicked do have compass about the righteous. Therefore, wrong judgment proceedeth. So wrong judgment proceeds, man. All right. So people don't understand that that's, that's what's happening, man. All right. Wrong judgment is going to always come because they don't go by the law of the Lord. All right. That's not all right. So um, it's something I wanted. I think it's uh, we go back to seventy three verse. Uh, this is Psalm seventy three verse eight. We're gonna go to uh seventy three verse nine. All right. Um, they set their mouth against the heavens and their tongue walketh through the earth, man. So they set their mouth against the Lord, man. They don't they don't care what the Lord says. They don't care about the law, statutes, commandments. And, and they're, they're, they go and do what they want to do, man. It's just that simple. All right? It's just that simple. Um, We'll go back to Psalms 94 and 20. All right? Shall the stone of iniquity have fellowship with thee, which frame a mischief by law? They By a law, they frame mischief by a law. They do what they want through want to through these laws, man. They don't care about what's wrong or what's right. They care about what they can get through through their penal codes, man. All right? Verse 21, they gather themselves together against the soul of the righteous. They killing these Israelites out here, man. Everyone's against us black, Hispanics, and Native Americans, man. And condemn the innocent blood. They condemn the innocent blood. This man was innocent and they condemning him. Well, he should have not been in his own house chilling, man. All right? He should have been in his own, own house doing nothing. All right? Because that's basically what they're saying if they're saying this woman didn't do anything wrong. That she just she just should have got nothing for what she done. Alright. Verse 22. But the Lord is my defense and my God is the rock of my refuge. And that's what our people need to wake up and understand, man. Alright. That Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah is our defense and the Lord is our rock of, of refuge, man. We have to stop trusting in oppression. Stop trusting into these men. It's gonna lead. It's gonna always let us down. While our children are dying and getting murdered in the streets, and we want to go and, and be there for a, um a, a the damn trial, man. When nothing's gonna happen. All right. Verse twenty three, and he shall bring upon them their own iniquity, and shall cut them off in their own wickedness. Yea, the Lord our God shall cut them off. They are gonna be cut off in the end, man. They can get that money now. All right, do whatever they gotta do now. But the Lord says He's gonna bring upon them their own iniquity. What they doing with all these lawyers? Uh, we get through these gaps. We don't care about the righteous. We don't care about the blood of the righteous. We don't care about these Israelites. We don't care about the blacks, Hispanics, or the Native Americans. All right. We're just going to keep getting through these loopholes and they're going to keep getting killed and there's never going to be any justice. But the Lord says it's going to come a time where he's going to bring upon their own iniquity. All right. He's going to bring upon them their own iniquity. He's going to bring what they've done to his chosen people and they're gonna, he's going to turn it on them, man. They're going to be getting killed for no reason. They're going to be no justice for them. All right. And shall cut them off in their own wickedness. Yea, the Lord our God shall cut them off. So they're going to be cut off, man, forever. All right. But with that, we're going to give all honor and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Hamashiach, Gomalaki, I think I, I didn't even say that at the very beginning, uh, Salakia, for that. All right. Call Allah, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, All right. For that. Um, but with that, we're going to give all honor and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Hamashiach, Gomalaki, I was All right. Call her lawyer, how about Shim Yaw Shabarakata? 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 Shalom, Israel.